As mentioned, you're going to be treated to uh, two things that uh, I, I think need to be said. First of, uh, secondly, uh, we are going to return to the book of Romans, uh, chapter one. Uh, I did not put those online. I thought about, well, we'll just continue with Romans chapter one during this, this interlude that we have not been meeting yet then I thought, uh, no, that one needs to be done face to face. And so that will be done here in just a little while. <clears throat> uh, I have some observations here. I guess most of my life I've been a, more of an observer than a participant. I notice what everyone else does, not so that I can follow suit but I find human behavior, my own included, to be quite a fascinating thing. Uh, certainly as this uh, malady has gone around the world, uh, governments of all nations uh, and their uh, uh, smaller governmental units like states and counties have had to react to uh, the disease that has been so much in the news. Um, some of it they've had to make up on the fly, much to the disdain of the healthcare industry, who has been warning forever. There's another thing coming, there's another thing coming. So we, we've had SARS, we've had Asian flu, we've, we've had swine flu, we, we, you name it, something is always popping up. Uh, and you would think that maybe we should have been better prepared for this, and some say not. Uh, early on, um, the citizenry, you and I, were quite cooperative. Uh, it was communicated that this thing was going on, and its transmission is from person to person, or from being on an object, uh, and so we are were encouraged to sequester in place, shelter in place, and uh, some of these terms that just absolutely nag me. If, uh, and I know that we're going to just simply have to get used to these because some, some of these terms are not going to go away. Lately though, social demeanor has certainly changed, has it not? We start to, to see numerous people uh, start to get a little agitated at the state of affairs that are going on. We start to see protests here and there and everywhere. They're having numerous protests at our state capitol. First was the gridlock thing and then gatherings on the steps. Uh, and then some have gone into the uh, Capitol building itself where the Senate and House meet and they've been chanting and things like this. And uh, we start to see Nazi flags being flown and, and guys with their AR slung over their shoulders. And I, I start to wonder, is that the point of protests? I don't know. Much of this ire has been directed at our governor. Uh, it has kind of crystallized with this, uh, the barber, the bar, where's the barber at, Owasso? Okay, it's kind of come to, it always does, it always seems to come down to a single individual. Uh, and indeed, as you and I look out at this, some of these restrictions do seem to be arbitrary. Why are some places closed while some places are allowed to be open. Why are some closed while liquor stores are open? Have you wondered that? Why are some places closed but the abortion clinics are deemed essential services? Um, so we start to look at, at some of these things and you and I start to get a little griped, don't we? Yes? Yes, I do see some heads going, going up and down. Essentially what we have here going on, it is a test of our submission to authority. Now some have postulated that as a conspiracy theory, 
Oh, they want to see how far they can push us before we resist. And that's not what I'm talking about. It is our natural tendency, you and I, to resist authority. Have you recognized that in, in yourself? I do in me. This is part of our natural sin nature that you and I are born with, and it goes all the way back to those two delinquents in the garden. As we look at their disobedience, their usurping God's authority, or thinking that they want to be like them, that trait has been instilled in all of us all the way down to all of us here today. So we fight our natural tendency against authority, and then of course our culture wants us and prompts us to be anti-authority. We, we uh, are trained as Americans. It's a free country and I can do what I want. Now if anyone has that attitude, uh, they're really mistaken. Uh, there are laws that prevent us from doing anything and everything that we would so desire. And so they say, we have constitutional rights. And yes, we do. The first question that I always ask anyone who says, I've got rights, I say, yes, you do. Please tell me, first of all, what a right is. And then we go from that point. So, resistance to authority. Um, citizens against civil authority. Um, What's interesting is you and I elect these people. They are not kings, queens, emperors, potentates, or anything of that that rule by divine nature. We elected these people. And more so, these people are in their position by the providential will of God. And so we have workers chief against employers, wives against husbands, children against parents, parishioners against their pastors. Not here, not here. We're good here today. So, and why is that? The sin nature disdains authority because the three most important people to me continue to be me, myself, and I. So, with all that in mind, we have some verses to look at. And we must draw our own conclusions, not as humans in general, not as citizens of the United States, but we have to look at this biblically through the eyes of God's children. We see here, uh, first of all, Greg, if you bring up 1 Timothy 2, 1 through 3. First of all, then, then I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all people, all, all people, for kings and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. This is good, and it is pleasing in the sight of God our Savior. Praying for the king. Uh, we must keep in mind the context in which these several verses were penned by their authors back in the day. Who was in charge? A duly elected government of the people, our representatives, public servants. Who, what is the context of, under which this was written? Who is in charge? I can wait. Thank you, Dale. Who was the Romans? What was the relationship between the Romans and the Jews? And so here we have from the pen of Paul who would be executed by his fellow Romans. Remember, he had Roman citizenship that they were to pray for the king and all those in high positions. Hebrews 13, 17. Obey your leaders. Oh, Bob, can't you stop there, please? 
and submit to them. Oh, see, it gets even worse. Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they are keeping watch over your souls as those who will have to give an account. Let them do this with joy and not with groaning, for that would be of no advantage to you. The book of Romans, chapter 13, verses 1 through 7. Let every person be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. Therefore, those who resist the authorities resist what God has appointed, and those who resist will incur judgment. For rulers are not a terror to good conduct, but to bad. Would you have no fear of the one who is in authority? Then do what is good, and you will receive his approval. For he is God's servant for your own good. But if you do wrong, be afraid. For he does not bear the sword in vain. For he is the servant of God, an avenger who carries out God's wrath on the wrongdoer. Therefore, one must be in subjection, not only to avoid God's wrath, but also for the sake of conscience. For because of this, you also pay taxes. For the authorities are ministers of God attending to this very thing. Pay to all what is owed to them, taxes to whom taxes are owed, revenue to whom revenue is owed, respect to whom respect is owed, honor to whom honor is owed, 1 Peter 2, 13 through 17. Be subject for the Lord's sake to every human institution, whether it be to the emperor as supreme or to governors as sent by him to punish those who do evil and to praise to those who do good. For this is the will of God, that by doing good you should put to silence the ignorance of foolish people. Live as people who are free, not using your freedom as a cover-up for evil, but living as servants of God. Honor everyone, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the emperor. Keeping in mind again, Paul is writing to his readers about their relationship to the Romans. So, we have seen churches and pastors defiant as far as meeting together. Uh, that question has come up. Uh, how can civil authorities prevent churches from meeting? That's persecution. I listened to a video and I would agree with what was there. Is this specific persecution against the church? The answer is, I don't think so. When it starts to get specific, you Christians cannot meet, oh, then that's as plain as the nose on your face, we would have entered into a time of persecution. Yet I will be quick to add that the mayor of New York City, Mr. de Blasio, because some churches were meeting and some synagogues were meeting, he threatened to close them permanently if they didn't stop meeting. Oh, oh, that is an unfortunate choice of words. And by the use of those few words, that tells me and it ought to tell you what goes on in the minds of certain people who are in positions of elected leadership, yes? Samaritan's Purse comes into New York City, one of the very few agencies that I would actually contribute or donate to because so much of the revenue does go into helping. Mr. de Blasio sent out a caution that they were going to be watched because he suggested that they were going to be selective in those who that they would be caring for. Ridiculous. And now that things are tidying up, the city of New York wants to charge them some sort of income tax. Is there persecution just below the surface out there? Certainly. It has been asked, 
Well, Bob, what about the verse? We must obey God rather than man. So we ought to be able to continue to meet, do things like this. Uh, one thing that we all need to bear in mind when dealing with things in Scripture, you know this, never, never take, never take a verse, never take a verse out of what? Context. Out of its context. So when people start spouting, we are to obey God rather than man, you need to look at the context that was set in. And we go to Acts chapter 5, verses 27 through 33, and we skip a little bit. This is after Jesus' death, resurrection, and ascension. The Holy Spirit has come. They are preaching Jesus again. The exact thing that the civil authorities thought that they were going to get rid of. By killing the Christ, they thought that the movement would dissipate. It certainly did not. And when they had brought, uh, the chief priests had brought them, the apostles, they sent them before the council, and the high priest questioned them. This would be Caiaphas, saying, We strictly charged you not to teach in this name. Yet, here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you intend to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than men. Do you see the context in which they are defying the authorities? These are the very individuals who had killed Jesus, who had ordered them, You may not teach in this name. That is the line of demarcation. That is a bright line. When governments say, you may not engage in worship, you may not preach in the name of Christ, you may not, you may not, you may not. At that point, we say exactly what they did two millennia ago, we must obey God rather than men. That is the context. Um, I don't think we'll go to those other verses, Greg. So, this is, this is a test for you and I. Um, again, going back, we resist authority. We have been told not to do certain things. How many times have you broken those certain things that we've been told not to do during these last several weeks? I have. You admit it. And so, we must bear in mind that Christ is our Savior, and He is also the Lord. And you and I know, are you ready? When the Bible speaks, God speaks, God speaks and therefore, in the context that God Himself has placed Gretchen Whitmer in the position that she is in, and the citizens of the state of Michigan have voted her into that office, we must be in subjection to her direction. So who's in charge, though? Her powers are limited. The state legislature says, you have now exceeded your authority. The courts are going to get involved. You and I sit here and we go, who is in charge, man? I guess I don't know. This is a conflict for you and I that in light of Scripture, we must accommodate authorities as best as we can. And so some of the things that we've seen, that I've seen online, that are directed at the governors, now some of them are kind of clever, some of them are not. Some of them are extremely disparaging to her person. Uh, don't get me wrong, I have no use for the governor. She's an abortionist. Excuse my language, but she has reddened her hands in the blood of children. She hates God. 
The one thing the woman needs, as is true with her administration and others who are in government, not here in our state, but also in this nation, they need to know Christ as Savior. That is the sole and only thing that they must have. We can talk about uh, recall, uh, voter out next time. And we, we do all those things. As believers in Christ, we've got to try to subject all that in our minds. And we have been admonished by the word to pray for these people who are in authority over us. First and foremost, that God will get a hold of their hearts and they, they will get saved and that their minds will be transformed into the image of Christ. To me, that's the only way. Yes? So, how can you and I intelligently dissent? Can we protest? Sure, we're, we're given the right to do that uh, and all those things. Um, as I conclude this part right here, as you and I resist earthly authority, my question is, drum roll please, how can we resist heavenly, heavenly authority? This is what it all comes down to. It's, it's easy to shake our fist at Lansing when we don't do what this says. That is the ultimate test of a believer. We are to be in obedience. Yes, we are being in obedience to God and also what he has said to be in obedience to the civil authorities that are over us. So, we wrestle with this thing in our minds. The bottom line is what scripture has said.